funnel in if you can. I know we need to be practicing social distance measures. Keep your mask on. If you guys prefer to stand, that's all good too. But come on around so we can get started. This is being streamed live on Facebook, and so we don't want to make those people wait too long before we get started. And everybody's got to listen, because it's been a long three years. <laughs> so I have things to say. <laughs> so no sidebars. Bring it in. <laughs> Well, hello, everyone. Um, it's, it's funny, when I scheduled this thing, I thought I'd schedule it after election day. But <laughs> here we are. Um, like most things that I do in my life, they don't typically go as planned. So I'm not surprised by that. But welcome, family, friends, community partners, stakeholders. We're honored to have you all here to celebrate this momentous occasion for Kevin and I. I feel so blessed to stand before you today, finally having the chance to say, this beautiful building right next to you all has all the capital needed of seven and a half million dollars. <laughs> to start construction and build great spaces for people to call home. Never thought I'd see the day. It was very, very, very long, three-year journey with many intricacies, obstacles, challenges. So many times I wanted to give up. Um, so many times I wanted to quit. But I would remember my mentees, my peers, little brown and black girls like my own who are here today who need to see me do this. I would think of the community I would think of Historic Vistula in its heyday and muster up the strength to keep pushing. Even though this was the biggest emotionally, financially, and physically <laughs> taxing process Kevin and I had ever faced, we wouldn't trade the experience for anything. It was the most valuable learning lessons of our lives. Some things that we learned to persevere in spite of to always have a great team of people around you who have the skills and the knowledge you lack, but believe in you wholeheartedly. Prayer is incredibly powerful. Kevin and I are a force, but it's hard to work with your spouse. <laughs> day in and day out, we disagree often, but at the end of the day, we always figure it out and seek ways to move forward. We also learned that projects of this magnitude take a long time to come to fruition. We had to readjust our expectations and each project is different. The word no is commonplace when you're a dreamer. We heard it over and over and over again. But we refused to let no be the last word we heard, nor give in to it. We kept going until we heard yes. And we heard many, a yes here, a yes there, which led us to this day. Is Sarah here? Sarah here? No. Well, I want to personally thank Sarah um, for her perseverance and never letting me give up. Um, she cried with me when things looked grim and let me air out my frustrations over and over again. And she always answered my call, even if <laughs> it wasn't going to be so great on the other end. So thank you, Sarah. She's with Lisk. I also have to thank Kim. Thank you, Kim. For hours and hours of conversations with Kevin and I at basketball practice, in parking lots, at the Lisk office, Mud Hens games, <laughs> and everywhere else we could bend your ear. Thank you. The entire Lisk team who are listening from New York, I thank you. I don't even know all the things you were doing behind the scenes that you didn't even let me in on, but I thank you. The Lucas County Land Bank. Where are my peeps at? <laughs> um, thank you for always being creative and believing in us and our capabilities um, when we don't even know our own. You guys are there for us, so thank you. I also have to thank Prometica, the City of Toledo, the State of Ohio Preservation Office, Aaron Clausen from Toledo Revival, 
Julie at, at Thomas Porter, who sat at my kitchen table until 3 a.m. as we were figuring out tax credits. Thank you, Julie. Foss, who's listening from California, our tax credit investor. Jonathan Levine, thank you. Finance Fund for coming in at the last hour to support the final dollars that we needed for this project. A very special thank you to the ARC team. You are the best team, and we are so fortunate to have each and every one of you. To our moms and dads who are here, and be strong. <laughs> thank you for always providing what we need exactly when we need it. And our four children who are so patient with us and understanding of our real estate shenanigans. <laughs> A big thank you to you all. At this time, we'll hear from our speakers who graciously agreed to speak today. Um, I'd like to call up Mr. Mayor Wade Kapsikavich first. Thank you. Long before there was a Toledo, there was a Vistula. Uh, Vistula was here first. Uh, there was, it was a little tiny, I don't even know if you'd call it a city. It was just a little gathering of people. And the people of Vistula merged with the people of another little place called Port Lawrence. And in 1834, they created what we know now as Toledo. So Vistula truly has always been there. It's always been with us. Um, it's always been a part of Toledo. It's always been Toledo's first neighborhood. Like Toledo itself, Vistula has seen good days and bad days. Uh, it has seen its ups and downs, and it has constantly been working to reinvent itself for uh, new opportunities. There's a lot of history in this neighborhood. The oldest continually standing uh, structure that exists in our city is about three blocks from here. Um, built in 1854, there was the home of Frederick Eaton, uh, who was a businessman from Boston, but you may remember the company he started. We Toledoans remember it as the Lion Store. Uh, my kids know it as Dillard's, but nonetheless, uh, the man who gave us the Lion Store lived just a couple, uh, couple blocks from here, and his house still stands, 170 years old. There's a deep, history um, in this neighborhood. And to exist as long as it has, it ha has to be resilient, has to be able to change with the times, has to take punches and get back up and dust itself off and, and, and fight back. That's what Toledo has done over the years and that's what all of us have done this year, this year of all years, a year of a pandemic, a year of economic anxiety, uh, of tension, uh, unrest, and uncertainty. And yet as we emerge from this year, uh, Toledoans stand poised uh, to take advantage of the many assets we have. Uh, we are going to be fixing a bunch of roads, uh, you may have heard. Um, but we're also, yeah, that, that's an applause. Um, but we're also going to be pouring, thanks to the voters of Toledo, $200 million into the riverfront a few feet from here. And that work will catalyze projects like this, and in fact it already has. I think Ambria and Kevin Michalacic, may, did I pronounce that name? I hate these ethnic last names. <laughs> the, uh, I, I know. Um, they may be my two of my favorite people in Toledo, and I sincerely mean that. Um, you want to talk about a risk taker, risk takers. Um, when this project began, the voters hadn't approved that Metro Parks levy yet. Uh, the, when this began, there wasn't the sort of energy and excitement maybe that a lot of us feel. It took a lot of risk, and it was a risk that others didn't take. Uh, folks who uh, were sort of older and grayer and maybe had a little deeper pockets, they wouldn't take a risk on a place like this, but they did. And it speaks well, not just of these two uh, wonderful people, um, but to uh, the city that produced them, because there's a lot of people in this town who appreciate 
our history and know that we can build on it. That's what this does. And um, there's a lot of people that need to be thanked. Obviously, the land bank. Um, I think we're about to hear from uh, Maurice uh, from National LISC, and without LISC, this wouldn't have happened either. Whenever good things happen, there have to be, you know, there are many uh, folks stirring, you know, stirring the, stirring the pot. What am, you know, with me, it always comes back to food. There's some sort of a food <laughs> analogy. There, there are a lot of people that have to be involved, but it began with Andrea and Kevin and the incredible success that we see here, which is happening not long after Toledo Spirits opened. And it goes uh, without saying that the old Westminster uh, gym project has gotten historic tax credits and it's coming and the ball is rolling and the momentum is building. That's what it takes to take uh, uh, an area that has a lot of history and bless it with a fantastic future. So thank you for your belief uh, in Toledo and your belief in the future. Thanks. Thank you, Mayor. This time, I'll call up State Representative Paula Hicks Hudson. Um, good morning. I'm very honored to be here, and I want to uh, to um, couple what the mayor just said about um, a promise and a future and a history. But I also want to talk about what I consider are the pioneers, and, and those are the pioneers who do take the risk, who look at a neighborhood, and they don't see what it was, but what it can be. And Ambria and her husband have done that, not just in this neighborhood, but throughout the city of Toledo, and have shown us as, as an example of what it means to be those pioneers. When I was the uh, representative for this area, we saw a lot of promise here, and that would have been probably about eight years ago or so, and to think that from eight years to now, we now have that partnership, the partnership between the public, the private, as well as all the others that make up what is going to make this a vibrant neighborhood. This is, as the mayor said, the oldest neighborhood in the city of Toledo, but it is not the end of that story, as he also said. It's the beginning, and what I hope to see that will come of this is the is the blossoming of more places and more people that will make those differences um, to make this a neighborhood where folks can be proud of. I'm, I'm looking to see that some of the members of, of the team that put this together, that they will continue to work with not just you, but with others to make this neighborhood the place that we can call the, you know, the premier, not only the first neighborhood, but the premier neighborhood of the city of Toledo. And on behalf of the state of Ohio, we're so happy that we were able to partner with you through the historic tax credits and also to stand with you as you make this journey and to continue on and to know that the, the state of Ohio, me as your district representative, will continue to fight and push to bring those dollars back to the city so that we can, you know, expand these types of projects. So, again, thank you for inviting me. Thank you for the vision that you and your husband have. And thank you to all of you for being here because together we can move the city forward, we can move the area forward, and we're going to do that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, now we're gonna hear from LISC CEO, Maurice Jones. Well, good morning to Toledo. You can say good morning, man. <laughs> I mean, come on, look how beautiful. This is a celebration, right? Not a, no. um, I am um, honored and happy to be here on behalf of LISC to say congratulations, Ambria, to you and your husband and for this incredible project. Uh, a former Wonder Bread factory, huh? I, I, I probably kept that factory in business while it was here. <clears throat> but. But that's for another day. <clears throat> um, we are delighted, and I want to thank Kim and the LISC team, wherever they are. Oh, there you are, uh, for the great work that you all do. You know, LISC has 36 <clears throat> offices around the country. Don't tell anybody, but this is the best one right here <clears throat> in Toledo. <clears throat> don't, don't get me in trouble with the others. 
uh, we're just ecstatic to be able to, we're investing $4.7 million uh, in your investment here. And we're delighted you're going to have uh, housing for a, a, a workforce here, and you're going to also have your headquarters here, right? Bigger picture, and that's where I want to go with you. If you look at what's happening in the country today, I would submit that the biggest risk we have to being as good as we can be is the gap that we have in wealth and health and opportunity between races. It turns out that across the country right now, a white family, the median net worth of a white family in America is 10 times that of a black family in America. Turns out that if you look at black neighborhoods or people of color neighborhoods versus white neighborhoods, you will find that the life expectancy gaps are 10, 20, and in some places across the country, 30 years difference. Guarantee you that in this area, you've got a life expectancy gap that you can trace to place and race. It turns out that unless the country gets serious about closing these racial wealth and health and opportunity gaps, that it's going to cost us $1.5 trillion dollars over the course of the next 10 years to our GDP. One of the ways that we close that gap is to get serious about investing in businesses led by people of color. So we are delighted to be doing this because of what you're going to get, but we are also delighted to be investing in talent of color, and the country needs to take it much more seriously if we are going to be as great as we can be. Toledo is showing the country what it should do. So I'm here to say thank you. Thank you for investing in talent of color, and let's keep doing it. It will make Toledo, Ohio, and the country great. Have a good day. Thank you so much, um, Maurice. Now we'll hear from the president of the Lucas County Land Bank, David Mann. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, that's good. See, good job, Maurice. <laughs> Taught him well. It's not possible to be happier than Ambria and Kevin are yeah. today, but the land bank folks are mostly here, and we're pretty happy to be here today and, and happy to be with you. Uh, I am the person here who is going to try to talk the least. But I just have two things. There's two words that came to mind when I thought about what to say here today. The first one is change. This building right here was abandoned for a long time before the land bank was able to take it over. But us taking it over didn't do anything but create an opportunity. It took the courage of Ambria and Kevin and the perseverance and the hard work and the not take a no for an answer to actually create the change that we are now going to witness here going forward. And it's on them. So we can be catalysts of this for those of us who do this kind of work. But it takes people like Ambria and Kevin to actually get it done and good on them. The other word is hope. We all heard about this neighborhood being the oldest neighborhood. This neighborhood hasn't had a lot of hope for a while. It hasn't seen the best days our community has seen. But projects like this create that kind of hope. This isn't enough. This one isn't enough. No matter how much work goes into it, no matter how much we're happy about it, we have to keep doing more. But hope, to paraphrase a great person, is a stubborn thing that gives people the drive to keep moving forward. And that is the opportunity that we have today 
We're excited about this. Thank you for being our partner. Thank you for doing it. And let's get to work. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, David. All right, now we'll hear from Kate Summerfield from Prometica. Hi, good afternoon. Um, Ambry and Kevin, I really want to just say thank you for your leadership, um, the work that you've been doing across the city, not only in this project, but in neighborhoods in uptown, in downtown. Um, you are Toledo, and you're what gives us hope for Toledo, and so thank you for your perseverance, thank you for your dedication, thank you for your vision. Um, this community does not turn without you, and so thank you to be both. I want to pick up um, on what Maurice said. So in Toledo, in our neighborhoods, we have a 22-year life expectancy gap. 22 years between our lowest income neighborhoods and our highest income neighborhoods. And that's frankly not acceptable. Um, on behalf of ProMedica, I want to thank LISC for our partnership in the work. We know that housing is health. And if the city of Toledo is going to turn to become a strong market, it's because of people like you, Ambry and Kevin. So huge thank you. Great day for Toledo. Great day for celebration. Um, and let's get to work. Thank you. Thank you, Kate, and to all of our speakers. So this 80,000 square foot factory, the former home to Continental Baking Company and Wonder Bread, built in 1924, is a rich part of Toledo's history. At one point, the manufacturer was the largest bread distributor in the world. Arc development and arc restoration and construction will preserve that history by converting the structure into 33 loft apartments and move our headquarters here. Please visit wondertoledo.com for pre-leasing and additional information. If you or anyone you know would like to live in close proximity to downtown Toledo in October 2021, <laughs> please send them our way. Take a postcard or two to share um, we plan to give tours, but due to the spike in coronavirus cases, the construction that's going on, it's probably not a good idea. But we'll have a grand opening and invite you all back at that time. Um, again, thank you so much for every last one of you for being here, for being supportive of Kevin and I in this journey. We have a long road to go. Construction is slated to take us about 12 months, but we're making a lot of progress, hopefully as soon as possible, and um, we'll be activating this building. So thank you all again. Have a great weekend. Oh, we've got to do our ribbon cutting, sorry. <laughs> so can I invite you guys up? Kevin, I don't know where he is. He doesn't like this sort of thing, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> and he probably won't this side or Where would you like us? In front. In front of it? In front of the podium. You only, cut, you only cut so many ribbons in life. Yeah.